Well, more now on our top story. Those reports suggesting that the ISIL leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi has been killed. In the a leader US of the so-called Islamic State, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, is dead. His erstwhile state in Syria and Iraq decimated. Yet the challenge of violent extremism remains and is evolving in alarming ways. Our Global Extremism Monitor tracks how, even after ISIS, extremist ideology transcends borders, igniting new tensions and connecting existing conflicts to a global cause. This report highlights seven places to watch. Indonesia, Kashmir, Philippines, Kenya, Tunisia, Mozambique, and Bangladesh. In each, there is a rising danger from violent extremism, with militant groups growing in strength and carrying out increasingly deadly attacks. In 2017, the shocking potential of Islamist extremism was revealed in the Philippines. Groups linked to ISIS took over the southern city of Morawi and was only ended after a five-month-long siege by security forces. The Global Extremism Monitor confirms that the threat of violent extremism remains. It shows the concentration of attacks in the southern Sulu archipelago, revealing the extent to which groups use remote islands to carry out operations that blur the lines of ideological motivation and criminal profiteering. The Global Extremism Monitor also recorded the first instance of a suicide attack in the country for over a decade, which continued into 2019 with three further suicide attacks claimed by ISIS. This new trend indicates the growing potency of radical Islamism to inspire violence in the Philippines. In Kashmir, insurgent groups that were historically driven by narrowly nationalist motives have increasingly connected their cause to a narrative of global jihadism. Jaysh Mohammed, a Pakistani-based jihadist group, launched violent attacks with deadly consistency and launched grenade attacks at a rate of at least three a month. Nearly a quarter of all jihadist attacks targeted Indian security infrastructure, the focus of extremists in Kashmir. If the broader political question over the status of Kashmir is not settled, the region will continue to face new generations of violent extremism, which oppose Indian control in the region. Mozambique suffered an unprecedented level of Islamist extremist violence in 2018. The militant group Ansar Sunna launched an insurgency which resulted in 160 deaths. The bloodshed was concentrated in Cabo Delgado, the Muslim-majority northern province, a region already suffering from high poverty and unemployment. 92% of their attacks targeted civilians, drawing comparisons with Boko Haram in northeastern Nigeria, which uses violence to instill terror in communities. An example of this took place in May when Ansar al-Sunna kidnapped and executed 10 civilians. Kenya continues to suffer at the hands of the Al-Shabaab militant group that is based in Somalia and torments communities across East Africa. In 2018, the group focused its attacks in the northeastern region bordering Somalia, provinces largely inhabited by ethnic Somali and Muslim populations. Over 80% were directed at the country's security forces as it seeks to push the Kenyan military out of Somalia. Yet, extremism in Kenya also appears to be increasingly connected to global Islamist trends. Reports suggest Kenyan citizens have gone abroad to fight for jihadist groups, such as ISIS in Yemen and Ansar al-Sunna in Mozambique. The mounting threat of Islamist extremism in Indonesia was brought into sharp focus in May 2018, following a series of bombings carried out by homegrown ISIS affiliates. The Global Extremism Monitor reveals that almost 90% of extremist attacks in Indonesia in 2018 were carried out by ISIS followers, operating under the umbrella organization Jamaa and Sharu al Dawla. Our research highlights how this group is targeting individuals representing the government. More than half of the attacks have been against Indonesian police as they seek to dismantle the pillars of the secular constitution in the world's most populous Muslim-majority state. At least 28 people were killed due to the Islamist extremist violence in Tunisia in 2018. Yet the scale of the emerging challenge is expressed more clearly by the high number of Tunisians who went to join ISIS in its battlefields of Syria, Iraq and Libya. Up to 7,000 Tunisians are estimated to have joined the group, with roughly 1,000 of those already having returned. This developing security threat demands a greater understanding of the local extremist groups that will likely be rewarded with scores of new battle-hardened recruits.
The most active of these is Jund al Khalafa, ISIS's affiliate in the country, which launched 12 attacks, two thirds targeting the military. The largest extremist groups operating in Bangladesh are Jamaat and Mujahideen Bangladesh, JMB, and its offshoot, Neo JMB. The targeting of symbols of secularism resembles the objectives of extremists in Indonesia. However, in Bangladesh, the focus of this violence has been civil society, with secular journalists and bloggers as the main victims. While the Global Extremism Monitor reveals the extent of Bangladesh's state counter-extremism operations in 2018, accounting for most fatalities from extremist activities, the government needs to develop a long-term strategy to counter the evolving threat from Islamist extremism. While each of these places exhibit specific difficulties relating to their economic and political context, certain trends draw them together. As violent extremism and the ideology that drives it does not stop at borders, it is vital to recognize that it must be tackled at the local, national and international level.